In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a rundown of the new paints from Indomitus. And I'm gonna be teaching you how to use them to paint this guy. Welcome to another Artist Opus video. Uh, today we're going to be using Tesseract Glow and the new Metallics and Wash to paint up this guy uh, pretty much entirely using paints from the new set. Really, really solid result. This thing is pretty awesome actually, uh, really good utility piece of paint. Um, all of the paints work pretty solidly together. Uh, the end result is super, super solid and I think that as a result of just kind of restricting your paint scheme down to basically it's, it's just the four new paints and then like silver and a couple of rust colors you can get a very very cohesive scheme really quickly so this is a little bit more of an in-depth video than i would normally do i'm talking about the properties of the paint and how they work so hopefully you find that useful uh, if not let us know if you found anything different let me know i'm still learning about them i'm going to be trying them out in a couple of new different ways over the next couple of months and see if i pick up any properties that if I didn't realize, uh, it's worth noting that they are quite thick, the metallics. I talk about that further in the video, but they, they don't work exactly like other metallics you may have used more in the past. Uh, just so you're aware, if you pop over to our Imperial Fist video, which we'll link somewhere here, here, somewhere, um, we have a competition running. So if you go over there and make suggestions for future content, uh, you'll be entered into a prize draw to win a texture palette and a set of our brushes of your choice. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so for anyone who is about to airbrush with a Rune Lord brush, um, number one, I would heavily consider just using this with a brush brush rather than airbrush. If you are gonna use it with the airbrush though, give it about twice as much um, thinner as you're used to. This is an extremely thick paint. So there's one scoop of paint there with the amount of drops that I'd put in normally. Um, let's see if I can kind of make this show up that's still pretty gloopy. Like physically that is a thick and viscous paint. So there you go. I've pretty much doubled the amount of thinner that I would normally use. At this point, see it's running down the edges of my airbrush more readily, but it's, um, it, it's not only thicker than uh, a normal paint, but it seems just to need more thinning as, as well as that, like in addition. So um, be prepared to do two thin coats and use quite a lot of thinner along with that. I'm using Tamiya's thinner, which I've used for years. I'm not sure if maybe it, it works better with others, but um, this is just my finding. So I would really recommend thinning it a little bit more than you would do normally. Okay, as far as application with an airbrush goes, uh, with a brush, just approach it normally, stippling or uh, putting it on normally is absolutely fine. With the airbrush though, you can see it, it comes out fairly well, but um, just do quick passes over the model build up a few layers and I could have even thinned this more than I have now, uh, despite the fact it's literally got like, I don't know, more than twice as much thinner as normal. So I'll do a few passes over this to get it super smooth and super shiny and then we'll rock on. All right, so the second stage, uh, the same uh, that I said for Rune Lord Brass goes for the Canop Tech Alloy. I'm going for this from above. and I'm just doing it directly from above the model here. So concentrate in pretty much entirely on getting it from those top down angles. I don't do this by changing the angle of my airbrush, I do it by changing the angle of the model, just personal preference, but I think it's the best way to do things and keep them consistent. And so our guy is now looking a lot more shiny. I've done this all over, and uh, this one I would say plays nicer in terms of airbrushing nicely, but the, the level of shine that we can see on the model having stepped this up and hit it from above, it really is very, very noticeable. Right, he's looking fantastic. Let's ruin him. Okay, now for the cryptic armor shade gloss. A couple of drops of thinner. Obviously, if you're really paranoid about contamination, don't use the same brush you just used on silver metallics to load your airbrush, but not worry too much about that. So that is about a 50-50 mix. And what we're gonna be doing with this is aiming it at the recesses of the model. Okay. Uh, we are gonna be aiming particularly for the joints, but I'm gonna be aiming for the lower half of each section. So for example, these thighs, around the knee joints, um, we'll be building it up. I'll be taking that approach to the model. So I'll just show you on the cheekbones of the head. If we aim from underneath, 
actually catch the cheekbones and the eyes really nicely. There we go. So we're gonna be taking that approach all over the model, uh, concentrating on the recesses and taking our time a little bit because this will really help the final model look fantastic. So if you guys wanna see how precise you can be, I've dialed the pressure down on my airbrush a little bit and I'm gonna aim for this uh, kind of knee joint here. You can put some on and then use your airbrush as a hairdryer. It's a really nice color this, I really rate this actually. Um, you can build this up in multiple layers and it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper and darker and darker and more rich. So I am really impressed with uh, using this. I don't know if it's because it's a gloss paint or whatever, but uh, I'm definitely having fun and there is quite a lot of utility to this armor shade works really, really nicely through an airbrush. All right, so using the very same mix that is still in my airbrush, I am using a size four, nothing delicate here, and I'm washing the entire model. So this is gonna make sure that all of those recesses that don't get caught by airbrushing get all caught up by using a physical technique. So get this all over the model, and uh, just a top tip here, if you want anywhere to be darker in particular, just end your stroke with a brush in that section and that's where you get your pulling, that's called your lift off point where you lift your brush off. So um, anywhere you want to be dark, like fingers or wrist joints or something like that, if you end your stroke in the area you want to be the darkest, uh, you'll be good. Now one thing to be mindful of is that we have used thinner in this mix, so you can add some water to it um, or uh, varnish your model to make sure that you don't remove your previous stages by uh, touching it with a thinner. Okay, so the next stage is to use Canoptech Alloy for dry brushing. We've got the small from our Series D set here. We've put some on our brush, we've removed the majority of it, and this should allow you to pretty much pass over the miniature pretty much with immunity to making mistakes. So this should be hitting the edges, and then if there's a particular area you'd like to be brighter, so we're gonna concentrate on the top parts of sections. We've made the bottom sections darker, or the sections of the joints darker. The bits that are next to those dark sections, so the bottom of his calf, the top of his thigh. In these situations, we're gonna have some extra time and kind of buff up. Like I said in the first part, these are pretty thick paints. They're also quite sticky. Um, I think they've been made for extremely good coverage and that is a bonus in some ways, but in other ways it makes them a little bit harder to work with. So just take your time. This stage will counter some of the gloss coat from the, uh, from the wash. Don't worry about that though, it'll still, still kind of retain its character. I'm gonna go all over the model doing this, as I said, paying special attention to the tops of, um, of the model where the light's gonna be hitting and the edges. Okay, so for the next step, I want you to grab whatever the brightest silver in your collection is. It doesn't matter particularly. I've used Vallejo's Game Air Silver here. It's just what I had to hand. And take a little bit of your kind of tech alloy on your brush. It is so thick. And then a tiny bit of your brighter silver. Work off the vast majority of it. And then those sections that we just hit, we're gonna try and hit lightly in the middle of them or the top of them. Uh, same approach with the edges and stuff like that. We're just looking to build on the, uh, the last stage that we put down and very carefully buff up the entirety of the model. If you want it to be darker towards the base, towards its feet or anything like that, rock on. But um, I'm gonna try and hit all of my model with this and uh, really bring some stages up to a, a proper silver kind of buff or shit. Now I'm going for one of my favorites here, which is mixing paints in with washes. We've got one part Cryptek Armour to two parts um, Lamium Medium. And then we have a tiny little dot of a bad and black, which was too tiny. So we have two tiny dots of a bad and black. Just to keep the depth in the armor, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wash the entirety of the figure with this. And as I said the first time round, pull um, and lift off towards the areas you wanna be the darkest. So if somewhere wants to be super bright, um, you can wipe it off. I'll show you that now. So if you want this dark towards the bottom and then light towards the top, just quickly grab 
any other brush, doesn't matter what it is at all. Got my poor basing brush here and then just absorb off uh, the stuff that you've got in the raised section. So if you were to do that on the head, we get the sides, pulling at the bottom there, kind of over its temples, wherever you do it, get the face and the top section, pull down so it's darker at the bottom, pull down so it's darker at the bottom, quickly nip in with this brush and then make sure that the top remains untouched. And you can do that all over the entire piece. So for the next step, we are mixing Doombal Brown and Trost Layer Orange. This is one of my kind of TM rust mixes. I've just got a, uh, I've added quite a lot of water. It's probably um, well, one part of each of those colors to like three or four parts water. And I'm still using my massive size four because why wouldn't you when you can? And basically I am concentrating this in the recess. It doesn't matter if you get overspill particularly, but uh, anywhere that I could imagine being rusty, um, I'm just, popping a little bit of this in. And this is really gonna work wonders all over the piece. It'll help pop a super bright color in there. And this is one area to make sure that part of the reason for washing and taking things down to be dark is so that we can get some nice contrast where we've made the recesses really dark and like the joins really dark. And then we're gonna be pumping everything up with a bright color. So just pop this anywhere where you can imagine the rust. You can put a little bit, you can put a lot, you can put it in rivets. You don't have to, uh, it's up to you. You could just give everywhere a light sheen. You could uh, get a big wet brush full and hit the entire model. Uh, it really, really wouldn't matter. Um, I'm gonna be fairly fairly liberal with it, but I'm gonna concentrate it uh, mostly on the recesses because that's uh, kind of the, uh, the idea of the theme that I had for this guy. And as you can see, it's already looking pretty tasty. Um, not only does this add some contrast in terms of color, but it adds some contrast in terms of finish. We're putting a really, really matte, um, very diluted painting mix next to some of the shiny areas and everything's getting amped up and dialed up to 11 just by virtue of being next to something different. So next, just to dial it up, we're gonna be using Fire Dragon Bright and to give you an idea of how I made the first mix, it's nothing particularly precise. Take a little bit. A little bit more, these are big brushes. Gonna take a little of the Troll Slayer Orange Got no doing ball on this mix though, so it's going to end up being pretty bright. And then I'm going to dot it within those areas. So I'm not going to hit every single bit, but you don't want to be landing this anywhere new. So you want to be landing this within areas where you put the previous mix. So just the same again, uh, you can go as full on with this or as subtle with this as you like. And of course, this stage is absolutely optional. I'm gonna go all over, uh, picking some key areas, and then within those, we're gonna dial those up as well. So if I decide that I want this leg to be particularly bright, for example, I'll dot in the middle of each of these sections. And then within those, we can come back and we can dot uh, our purest kind of rust highlight, if you will. So this is advancing really quickly. Uh, I've mixed a little bit of Flash Gets Yellow in with the Fire Dragon Bright. I'm gonna drop that basically in the middle of all of the brighter sections. This isn't gonna go absolutely everywhere. And it's quite important it doesn't go anywhere where we didn't do our previous step because otherwise it's gonna stand out like a sore thumb. Make sure you push it into the recesses. But this should really help add uh, a lot of contrast and kind of coolness to our guy. Uh, if you're doing this with a non-rusty color, it'd look like he was glowing from the inside of his joints. So uh, if you did it with a cool blue or something like that, you could absolutely be using exactly the same technique for a different kind of theme and final result. So that's looking pretty tasty. That is enough for the rust. Let's finish him off. All right, so we're now onto the pre-work for the glowing sections with Tesseract Glow. So I've got my extra small here, and a little bit of white score. You can use whichever white you prefer to work with though removing the excess on the texture palette, my finger, and then I'm basically hitting up the areas that I would like to be glowy. So we're not doing anything super smooth or super perfect here. And basically the purpose of this is to make sure that that Tesseract Glow, when it does land, um, it lands on something that is gonna really, really help it uh, be super vibrant. So I'm hitting the sections that I want to be glowing. 
And then the important part about doing this with dry brushing is I'm working my way outward from those sections and in the direction that the light would be being shone from them and hitting that with white too. So what this should do is, particularly the edges, but the surrounding areas in general, uh, they should get picked up more easily when we do do put the effect paint on there. So hit all of the areas you want. You could just flat paint these um, to get them super, super bright, but I'm gonna try and do it all with a dry brush. And our guy has eyes. They're gonna be glowing in the same color. Remove the excess and then in exactly the same way, carefully working around their surroundings. Not too much. And hopefully this should help all of our glowing effects land nicely. All right, let's give it a whirl. Okay, so still using the size four. Let's stick with it. Let's see if we can get to the end of this. I love using big brushes. So I'm using pure Tesseract Glow. I've got a fair bit of liquid in my brush in terms of just water. So that's gonna dilute it a little bit. Oh wow, that is bright. All right, so what I'm looking to do with this is thinly glaze it over all the sections that we've done. And following our principles that we've learned with our washing before, um, anywhere you wanna be particularly bright um, or heavy with it, end your stroke there. So if you want it to be bright in the recesses or you think that's a safer area to end your stroke, then start somewhere else and pull into that section. Now what I've done here, uh, which you didn't see in the previous step, is I actually lightly dry brushed a couple of areas on the model. And the idea is that I can simulate that everywhere is being touched by this. So only areas that are facing the glowing source, I've painted this side of it too, um, in terms of his, uh, his inner details in his chest and stuff like that. I'm gonna hit with the same glaze, building it up. And one thing to be wary of is try to not let it pull in the recesses too much because obviously this isn't meant to be a wash at this point, it's meant to be a glaze. There's no reason why the recesses would be more green than the rest of it. So that's the only particular place where you need to demonstrate any control with it. Just stick it to the recesses, uh, so to the raised areas. And there we go, I'm gonna build that up in a couple of steps. Going for the most vibrant green, but basically our work that we've done with the white there, even though it was just one step has really, really it's, uh, it's been very effective. Uh, now with a much smaller amount on my brush, I'm gonna lightly glaze the surrounding areas. So anywhere that's been missed that would be hit, obviously if it's kind of somewhere that'd be cast in shadow, this light wouldn't be hitting it. There we go, that is pretty effective. We've got his eyes remaining. So again, Starting from outside, pulling to the middle. Not wanting anything too over the top. You can scrape off the excess with your finger. I think that looks pretty sweet. That is a cool paint. Really, really like that. Okay, rough and ready. Super simple, uh, barely any detailed steps in there and that would be a badass looking army. Now, just because I couldn't resist, I am adding a little bit of Flash Gets Yellow into the mix, and I'm just picking out some of the core sections of the glowing parts, uh, just to make sure that rather than all being exactly the same color, I'm actually going to a highlight, I'll also pick out his eyes, and then the closer sections the parts that I'd like to be glowing will get a little bit of this too. But it's just gonna add a little bit of contrast and then I'll dot each of these with some yellow and he'll look lovely on his base. I love these models. So, there we go, finished result. He is looking pretty fantastic. Really, really pleased with that. Got a lovely level of contrast with uh, shininess, rust, um, things looking old, things looking new, things looking glowy, things looking matte, things looking glossy, um, really, really effective. This is the kind of dark alienscape base uh, that we did with our Ultramarine 
and there will be a tutorial up for that very soon if it's not up already. We are trying to hammer out the content, content as fast as possible for Indomitus, so uh, I'm not quite sure when it's gonna be coming. Uh, that is that. Uh, learning points here. All of the new paints are really sticky. Uh, so Tesseract Glow is the least sticky of these paints, but Cryptic Armor and both of the metallics are really, really kind of um, a gloopy. Uh, these are probably geared towards fantastic coverage, which is what they do, but that does come with negatives, like I said. So make sure that each of your stages is dry and when you're making the wash, even though I use some thinner in it, um, I just use water and lamium medium because it's a little bit less volatile. You're not gonna kind of reawaken the already done work on your model. Uh, they're fantastic though, really, really rate them. This is great. It's not quite as vibrant as the fluorescence from other brands, but do not be afraid to mix a little bit of other colors in to really pump it even further. So super pleased with the result. Um, really good to test out these new paints. Quite impressed with them in general. Um, that is a lovely looking Necron. Uh, an army of those would look fantastic and resisting. All right, so he turned out pretty well. Uh, there he is, he's on a kind of cool uh, alien base. If you want to see what he looks like on a warm base, here's one I made earlier. Um, so you can either base for cohesion or you can base for contrast. Either of them is absolutely fine, I think they're both super viable and both of those bases, the tutorials will be out for them in the near future if you're looking for a super, super efficient way to base an army. It's literally like four steps using some dry brushing and a contrast paint wash. But really, really, really solid. Um, let us know what you think of the Necron. Uh, I'm still working around on how to use the paints, maybe I went a bit heavy handed with the glow, so I'll be a bit more restricted with that in the future. But the end result is really, really, really solid. Um, I do think it's worth using a super bright silver to finish with these paints because they are a little drab, especially when you wash them down. And I like the contrast that you get by using the, um, the new wash. Uh, the gloss is fantastic. Um, that does make things look a little bit weird between the glow and the rest of the armor because the armor is super shiny and then you have a glow that is meant to be glowy so one thing that I would recommend is maybe hitting it with a satin or even a gloss varnish over the glowing sections and that will help them kind of pop out and remain as vibrant as they should be because especially when you've got rust and metallics and a glossy finish in the other sections you can actually end up with a glow looking a little bit drab because it has a super 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 matte finish uh, so yeah just another tip there uh, I think that's about all the learning I've got on the new paints. As I said, I'm going to be discovering more about them in the future. Uh, let me know how you'd like to see the next Necron that I paint painted. Like if you want something super shiny non-metallic metal, super shiny metallic, uh, like blue or green metallic or something funky like that, like let me know. I'm happy to try out whatever it is people want to see the most. And these models are fantastic. They're a joy to paint. They're also quite fast to experiment on. So they are made for uh, kind of like playing around and working your things out. Thank you very much for watching. Please give us a like, comment and subscribe and uh, hit that bell notification for being notified for the future Indomitus content that we have. There is still plenty more to come.